Hi, I'm Renarda Clanton Moyd. I'm a communications specialist with the Cumberland County Schools and your host of Get Connected. During this monthly show, we highlight numerous educational topics that face today's student, educator, and parent in the Cumberland County Schools. Now, this fall, the school system announced its Teacher of the Year and Principal of the Year. Both were chosen because of their proficiency, knowledge, and expertise as superb educators. After this break, we'll talk with Cumberland County Schools Teacher of the Year and Principal of the Year about their life's work during this edition of Get Connected. Radish. Is that for horses? Remember me, Mr. Lobster? From last Tuesday? Banana. 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 Here comes the rain. We need a hat. <laughs> and why do we need a hat? Hmm? It's a giant. That's right. When you talk with your child, you build vocabulary. And learning starts long before school does. For more tips, go to bornlearning.org. Never too early to start reading to your kids. There are amazing possibilities when you open a child's mind to reading. Explore new worlds. Read. Again, thanks for joining us for this edition of Get Connected, where we're talking with the Cumberland County Schools 2012-2013 Teacher of the Year, Ms. Angela Parker, who teaches language arts and reading at 71st Classical Middle School, and the 2013 Cumberland County Schools Principal of the Year, Ms. Crystal Brown from Ben Martin Elementary School. Angela, Crystal, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you much. very much. I'm so glad you all are here with me. I feel like I'm just in the presence of royalty right now. <laughs> Like you all want to give me a, a little wave or something. We left our day. tiaras at home okay. <laughs> today, so my, my throne room. Is I know. <laughs> That's all right. Now, let me ask you this. How does it feel to have received such an esteemed honor? It's fantastic. It's wonderful. It's nice to get the recognition. Mm -hmm. um, For me, I, it still hasn't sunken in quite much, but um, just what you said, honored. I feel very, very honored. Right, because now, um, Angela, you were selected in, what was it, September? Yes. And Crystal, you were selected in November. Yes. All right, so yeah, things <laughs> are still kind of new for you. What can she expect as the, the, the um, principal of the year here? Because I know you, you had interviews and things of that, and you were, it was just whirlwind for you. I did. I think the most exciting thing was when I did the interview with, um, a Reed Lolly or Chevrolet when they did the commercial. Yeah. And I had my students come to me the next day saying, Miss Parker, we saw you on TV. We saw you <laughs> on TV. I still hadn't seen the ad, but they saw me on TV and they were very happy about it. That's good. That is so good. And both of you all are so very deserving. So now that everything is sunken in, um, talk to us a little bit about your backgrounds. And we want to talk about the path that led you to this very point. Tell us a bit about your educational background and you know your, your professional background, those types of things. Well, for me, I'm a product of Cumberland County Schools. I actually uh -huh. went to elementary, middle, and what well, was it, junior high and senior high then. Okay. But I uh, went off to East Carolina University. I got a degree in music education. So I came back home and actually taught here in Cumberland County Schools uh, for several years. And I taught fifth grade through 12th grade orchestra. So. I thought, you know what, this time for a change, and administration really piqued my interest, so I went ahead and applied and went on to grad school, mm -hmm. got my master's degree, and then still remained in Cumberland County School, so I went from an assistant principal and now to, this is my seventh year as a principal. That's all right. So you were a, a music major. Yes. So now, do you sing, play, dance? What do you do? Talk, <laughs> tell me a little Depends bit. Depends on who you ask. <laughs> Um, my degree is, the concentration is in orchestra. My, my specialty instrument is violin. So I've been playing violin since fifth grade and I started here in Cumberland County Schools. That's great. And I, I've heard, I think I remember reading in your portfolio 
that you play you around the holiday seasons? Yes. You go to the different classrooms? I do. Um, at my school, uh, I definitely play during the holiday time, but also for our kindergarten students when they're learning the letter V, it's an appropriate tie-in. So I visit their classrooms and they get to um, see my violin. I play some different songs for them, but I also play out in the community in my church and some nursing homes and different, different venues. That's good, mm -hmm. that's good, that's all right. Now, Angela, what about you? What's your background as far as, you know, your education and, and, and professional? I didn't even start out as a teacher. I actually come from the Bronx, New York. All right, uh, woo woo! <laughs> ah. And I came down with my mother, who's like an inspiration to all women. She joined the military active duty when she was 40, 38. 38, 40, mm -hmm. about that time frame, and uh, brought me and my brother down. I was only 19 years old when I came here. I started with Payable State, but then took a break to uh, go into restaurant management. Okay. I managed restaurants for, I want to say, maybe eight years. Mm. So equal time that I've been teaching now. Yeah. Um, and I loved it, but it was taking so much time away from my children. It was so difficult to be able to tuck them in, uh, get their homework done, which as a teacher I find so valuable now, especially knowing how much of an influence parents do have in their students' lives. Um, so I decided something needed to change. We prayed about it and um, there was a teacher work fa job fair mm -hmm. over at, uh, where was it? At a hotel here in Cumberland County. Mm -hmm. And I walked in, got offered a position at Spring Lake immediately. Wow. And was excited and that gave me the encouragement to go to all the other tables mm -hmm. and was hired at 71st Classical Middle School as the seventh grade language arts teacher and I've loved every day since. Now you as well have a background where you, you sing, don't you? Okay, yes. and you kind of use your singing and your storytelling, I, if I can remember reading, to kind of help your students there in the classroom as well. I do, I use a lot of my experiences either in management or I was a little bit of a, not troubled teen, but mm -hmm. I had a little bit of a mouth, so I could relate to a <laughs> lot of our <laughs> students. Um, and so many of my stories come from my middle school years. Mm -hmm. And I talk to the students about listening to oral tradition. It's so mm -hmm. great for them right. to understand that oral tradition isn't just in literature books. It comes from their parents, their grandparents, their great-grandparents, other adults that may be in their lives that they can learn from their past. And this way they learn from their mistakes instead of having to experience the mistakes for themselves. That's great. And I include songs also. It, it, it's their treat every once in a while. That's good. And you know, it was the funniest thing we were in the green room. Crystal said, your daughter. Yes. Angela was your... Had the privilege of being in Miss Parker's class, absolutely. All right, I guess you had to always listen. Miss Parker said, Miss Parker I did. said... Well, part of our routine is, give me your rundown. So she went class period by class period and would tell me everything she did. So I got to hear quite a lot about Miss Parker's class, and she in turn got to hear quite a lot about our family, I'm sure. <laughs> Little kids, they'll go out and tell everything, one thing. Now, let me ask you this, as far as this process with um, being chosen as Teacher of the Year and Principal of the Year, what is the process that, you know, you both had to go through to get to this point? I was elected by my peers to okay. represent our school as Teacher of the Year, which was a great honor. Then we went to interview. We had to create a portfolio. There were a uh, 12 page portfolio. Whoa, <laughs> that's a lot that. of writing. Yeah, <laughs> on our uh, philosophies, ideas, things that um, we believe as teachers, our teaching methods. It was, it was quite intensive, but it was very reflective, I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, it gave me an opportunity to really dig deep into uh, why I love teaching so much. Um, and it was, it was very fulfilling mm -hmm. in the end, so I don't regret having to write 12 pages worth of work. Yeah. Um, then we went through an interview for district. Okay. I was elected to represent 71st School District as Teacher of the Year. And then Cumberland County That's good. interview. That's and good. Uh, that was quite a moment. That's good. Now your process was a little different. Yes, it was a little different. Um, the principals were able to nominate four elementary principals, one middle and one high school principal. Okay. And after that, then we were given our paperwork to complete our, our portfolio. Um, and it was on leadership, so we had different aspects of leadership that we had to look at and, and write to. And then we also had a very large interview, <laughs> yeah. a big panel that we had to go and sit before. I would think that that would be a nerve-wracking process to have to go before a panel like that. It was a little, but they put me at ease. They, 
once we got started and I realized, oh, I know the answers to these questions, you know, mm -hmm. I have a voice, uh, it, it wasn't that difficult at all. And you know what, now that you say that, I think to myself, whenever you go into an interview process like that, if you're passionate about what you're getting ready mm -hmm. to do or you're passionate about what you're getting ready to discuss, then it is, it's, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. That's good. That's good. That's good. Now, you know what I want you all to do for me right now. Can you go back or can you go in your mind and describe to me your first day? Because both of you were teachers and you continue to be teachers. You just have a different audience at times. Your first day as a teacher. Goodness, my very first day as a teacher, um, I was lateral entry. Okay. So I did. So lateral entry, explain to our audience what that means. Lateral entry means I didn't have a teaching certificate. I didn't go through school for teaching. I actually graduated from Fayetteville State University with a degree in English literature. Okay. Uh, I earned my teaching degree through Raleigh. Okay. So I took some extra classes. Okay. Um, but it was it was a very interesting experience. Okay. I came into the classroom fresh. Mm -hmm. um, with great ideas, great thoughts. I had a great mentor at the time. They had retired teachers come in and mentor how the process goes as far as lesson plans. And my mentor was very good about giving me positive comments about my mm -hmm. lesson plans. And it was just a go. It was so much like restaurant management, I hate mm -hmm. to say, but it really was. <laughs> I mean, when you can uh, manage a restaurant full of people, patrons, and, and, mm -hmm. and they're adults that have some similar situations that kids have, you mm -hmm. know, late homework, <laughs> I'm late to work, uh, uh, <laughs> similar yeah, situations. Yeah. It wasn't that difficult to manage a classroom. Mm -hmm. And I think teaching, the very first thing you have to overcome as a first year teacher is classroom management. And if you have the classroom management down, the rest is pretty much smooth sailing. Okay, okay. You remember your first day, Crystal? Oh, very well. Uh -oh. I didn't sleep very well the night before, mm -hmm. but it was a mixture of excitement and a little bit of anxiety. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, I had two schools I had to go to that day. I had to go to a middle school and a high school. So I started off at the middle school. Um, unfortunately, they were fixing my room. It was the old shop room. So mm -hmm. I technically did not have a classroom for several weeks and okay. so being a music major I wasn't taught how not to teach music for my music class because there was no room for instrument storage so a lot of the children were coming in going well what are we going to do now so I had some adjustments to make that was my first lesson in being very flexible yeah but it worked out and then um, I remember my mentor stopping by and spending a portion of the day with me so that mm -hmm. was a huge relief and it, it was a blessing. So I really, to this day, I appreciate everything she did for me. That's great, that is great, that's all right. Well, we're glad that you all hung in there and you're still <laughs> with us now, okay? And you're gonna sit here and stay with us for a minute. We're gonna take a break, okay? Okay. All right, well, don't you go anywhere as well. Stick around for more Get Connected. I'm a single mother of two kids. I work a lot. We do miss a lot. He dropped off for a whole month. Sometimes I would talk to him and he wouldn't even turn around and look at me. I just get frustrated because in any way that I talk to him, it just doesn't go through his head. I didn't give up because there's always hope. Give your teen the boost they need to graduate. Call 1-877-4-A-KID or join us at boostup.org for tips and advice. In the event of a big emergency and, and I'm at work, my daughter's uh, school is, is two blocks away. That would be a very convenient meeting place for all of us. We'd uh, meet up at his parents' house. A meeting place? Not really. Um, my husband would definitely pick up the girls from school. I would want to make sure that she is has the girls or is on her way to get the girls. I know that there's a plan, but I don't know what the plan is. everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people, connected, interdependent, united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united.
Thanks for joining us for this edition of Get Connected. Our guests are Cumberland County Schools 2012-2013 Teacher of the Year, Angela Parker, who teaches language arts and reading at 71st Classical Middle School, and Cumberland County Schools 2013 Principal of the Year, Crystal Brown from Ben Martin Elementary School. You know what? When we were talking earlier, I forgot to ask you all, what excites you about education? Oh, the children. Oh. Every day when we come into the classroom and I see that the children are entering in, whether they want to be there or not, it excites me. I love to be able to open up the world of literature for them, uh, help them to get connected, to understand why it's so important that they read and why it's so important that they learn how to read better or to write better than they've already learned. It's just very exciting for me to be able to open doors for students. So you're even excited to see the children when you have some that come in and you can tell that they don't want to be there, they're not excited about being there? Absolutely. Really? Um, yes, yes, because I know I can work with that student. I have a very work, um, I guess a very good relationship with my parents. Okay. I make sure that my parents are aware of what's going on in the classroom. Mm -hmm. That. Um, if there's an issue with their student, I'm on the phone. I have no problem calling even on my cell phone if I need to and letting them know, hey, this is the contact, this is what's going on. Let's talk about this, how can I help? And if I can help that student become better in any way, whether it's attitude, whether it's in their reading skills, whether it's learning how to adjust to different people's personalities, then I've accomplished something and I've helped them become better people and citizens in our society today because one day these kids are going to be taking care of me. You're right, that is true. <laughs> and, uh, and I want to create the best possible society not just for them but for myself too. Mm, that's a good point. Now Crystal, what excites you about education? The children. Absolutely being, walking in the hallways, walking into classrooms, seeing them learn and for elementary schools they're so, for the students they're so literal. Mm -hmm. So it's funny to see their outlook on life and how they comprehend things and internalize things and Sometimes it, it, you get to look at life a different way by looking at it through the lens of a child. Mm -hmm. And that's what excites me. That's good. That's good. So even when you have a child there that has a disciplinary problem, because a lot of times teachers yes. will send those children to your office, yes. then you're still <laughs> excited about the children. Well, most of the time it's a challenge. I look at it as mm -hmm. this is a challenge, but I always, I'm like, what is the root of the problem? And these are still children and we love our children, so we take care of them. So even the ones who come in and who are having a little bit of a difficulty, I still care for them deeply and I want to work with them. But yes, I still am excited about that. That's good. Now what's your leadership style? Uh, it depends on the situation. Okay. <laughs> Most of the time I'm very democratic. I want to get everyone's input. Um, I truly believe in empowering those around us, not just the teachers, but also the students and the parents. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, that's my style of leadership. But there are times when I have to just make it, make the decision myself. So that's a little autocratic. Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to different things like schedules or... And safety issues. Safety, yes. Yeah, yeah, I can totally understand that. Um, can you all say that there was one single most moment in your career that really touched you? touched your life, made you a better educator? Um, just recently, actually, the first day of school, I had a student come into the classroom. He has grad graduated on from our school, goodness knows, he's probably a junior in high school now. Mm -hmm. He came and gave me a big hug the, during orientation because his sister's in my class. Oh. And he said, Miss Parker, I just want to let you know something. Uh, you're the reason why I'm still in high school. Oh, wow. And that is why I do what I do. Mm -hmm. To hear that one student who might have dropped out at any other time mm -hmm. say to me that I'm the reason, I, I want to make sure that that's why I keep doing what I'm doing, what I do. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that these students know that teachers are there for them, that we're able to help reach out and we're there to support them achieve incredible goals but they've got to stick with it and try regardless of what their circumstances. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about you, Crystal? A that single one, most moment. That's very clear for me. Um, it was in April of 2011 when the tornado hit. Oh, yeah. um, first of all, thank goodness it was a Saturday and there were no children there. But what happened afterwards was just so inspiring to me mm -hmm. to see a community come together. 
um, we were out of school for two days and then we literally had to open up um, and start teaching classes but we were doing so out of E.E. E. Miller's Recreation Center so we had to take whatever we had with us a lot of the materials and instructional supplies were still at Ben Martin that we couldn't take with us at that time they still had roadblocks so we had buses that allowed us to go in take what we needed but being able to go and through that entire situation and good teaching was still taking place and mm. learning was taking place and we were just embraced by our community that was so touching that was mm. the best experience of my life I can I can honestly say that as far as education is concerned that's great and when we have tragedies like that and the community comes together you really do get to see um, humankind yes. stand up you really do, and we have just such a, a wonderful community here. We really have a wonderful community. I remember that. Actually, I was giving birth around that time, so <laughs> <laughs> I remember that quite well. I remember that. I was on leave at the time. But um, let me ask you this then. How have you all dealt with um, difficult situations? How do you deal and handle difficult situations like as it pertains to the classroom, as it pertains to what you do in the schools? in the school rather. Well, for me personally a lot of um, for me f prayer first <laughs> to get through this through the day and the strength to to handle a situation in a way that would represent myself well and be a good reflection of our school and our community but it is challenging um, a lot of the challenges uh, unfortunately sometimes come in the in the form of, of parents um, when students are in the classroom learning they have to learn how to take responsibility for their actions. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm seeing a decline in parents allowing their children to take responsibility for their actions, whether it's not completing the work or not being a good friend or having poor social skills or, or just not wanting to give the best effort they can give. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we can address that and get parents more involved, a lot of the challenges that I'm seeing would decrease. Now when you say that, and I'm sure um, Angela can attest to this working there closely with students, what are some things that parents can do? When you say get involved, then most parents mm -hmm. just immediately think, okay, well, I'll go to PTA meeting if that's what you want me to do, or I'll come and eat breakfast if that's what you want me to do, but it's a little more than that, is it not? Yes, checking planners, that's a great way for communication. I think we did that when, when Jasmine was in her class. But just being, because we know realistically, parents can't always leave their job to come to the school and sit with their children. As much as they would want to and as much as we would like for them to be able to, sometimes that's just not a reality. But if they can have two-way communication with the teacher via email, telephone calls, anything of that nature, and just take a genuine interest, asking their child, what did you learn today? Do you have any homework? How about a project? Do you have a project coming up? Just those type of questions would go a very long way. You agree? Absolutely. There's been enough research to prove that positive involvement mm -hmm. is so important to helping students be successful. Um, positive involvement means not just saying, um, why didn't you do this homework or looking at the negative mm -hmm. things. Many parents react to the negative, but they don't respond to the positive. How was your day? Um, what homework do you have? What about this test? Great job. You know, things like that that are positive getting them involved in academics in the home, not just in school, but taking a part of the project, not just setting them up to themselves and making them do the project on their own, but actually helping their child do the research. My son hated reading for quite a long time. Actually, he still questions whether or not <laughs> he should have to continue to read an entire novel by himself. However, because I sit down and I read with him, mm -hmm. um, we were just in the doctor's office the other day and got to love modern technology. I had my iPhone on me and we pulled out a book, um, I Hate Middle School, it was the <laughs> second book, and we were reading it together while we were waiting for the doctor to call him back. Mm -hmm. And he was laughing with me and, and hopefully that was a, a little message to other parents out there also. You could take the time to read to your child in a busy day. We were in the doctor's office and I was reading to him. He's in seventh grade, mm -hmm. and still a young man likes to have that kind of time with his parents. Mm -hmm. I think that parents definitely need to be more involved in a positive way. And yes, coming to school isn't exactly feasible for most parents, but taking a day off just to be involved, there is nothing wrong with that. It's actually beneficial for the student to know mm -hmm. that their parent cares enough 
to work with the teacher and to work on behalf of their education, not because the teacher gives too much homework or whatever else may have you. And sometimes those situations do happen. Mm -hmm. But to know that the parents really do care about their academic success. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you find, though, um, in elementary school, it seems like there's a little more involvement. There's more yes. involvement. Mm -hmm. But then the older they get, for some reason, as parents, we tend to back away. And I don't know if, you know, your child starts going through this thing of, well, oh, please don't come up to the school. You're embarrassing me or whatever. But I guess as parents, we can't listen to that. We can't even think that they're independent enough to do whatever they're supposed to do when they're in middle school or high school. We've still got to go up there and, and check and be involved. I've heard many parents say that they're trying to allow their student a little more freedom in their activities or a little more freedom with their choices. And middle school is such an important age. Those, those are the years of development. <laughs> those are the um, years of growth. And, and many times their hormones are jumping like crazy. Oh, yeah. It is very difficult for them to make those wise decisions. So they need even more leadership direction, maybe allow them to make that choice together with a parental unit so that this way they can make good choices that are going to be beneficial to their future but to allow a child free reign is is a big problem mm -hmm. and you know what i'm looking at the clock on the wall and i see our time is almost up but i want to just kind of end off with um what would you tell our viewers out there about education what message would you like to share with them a brief message about education and its importance. It takes a village. You've heard that saying. It truly takes an entire community um, using our strengths to help students learn and grow. They have to be present in the lives uh, of our students. Okay. Great. There are very good teachers out there. There are great principals. We have great schools here in Cumberland County. Let's take advantage of them. Let's do what we have to do as a village to be able to work to bring it together. K through 12 is not failing the student. It seems like the working together part seems to be failing the student. And the more we can collaborate and work together to help build that student up, teach them not just scholastic lessons, but respect and life lessons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, ladies, this has been a treat. I'll have to have you back, okay? That sounds great. Absolutely. You'll come back and sing for us, and you'll come back and play your violin, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. <laughs> sure. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. Thank you. And on behalf of the Cumberland County School System, we want to thank you for tuning in for this edition of our show and for giving us a chance to help you get connected. Until next time.